Good morning and welcome to Elisa Maria Designs. Thank you for joining me here this morning. The first day of summer, the longest day of the year and quite possibly uh, the hottest day of the summer to, that is yet to come. We are all melting here in Philadelphia. I think tomorrow it's going to be like 105. Reminds me of my days when I lived in Florida. Anyway, how is everyone? How are you? I have a lot going on on this desk and I was, think, I was thinking about cleaning it before I start it. And I said, you know what? I don't mind my desk looking the way that it does because there's just a lot of creativity and a lot of stuff going on that I wanna share with you guys. I did have Crimson out earlier. I think I put um, a little update on Crimson in the community section where you do posts. So I was showing you what I was doing with her and I was under the impression when I put Crimson away that I had put her away because it was, you know, the holidays were approaching and I had so much to do and she just was not getting done. I did uh, Lilac, her sister. These are both from Dreamer Designs. These are both uh, from the artist um, Curtis Reykjavich and I got lilac done, I was happy, but I had run out of drills in what I thought was one section. And here, when I unrolled her, I figured, well, I'm gonna fill, I'm gonna fill crimson in and she's gonna be done for the holiday. Like, like I would have left that much and not finished it. But it was actually, um, there were five, four, uh, there were five 10 centimeter tiles that still had to be done. There was a lot to do. And a lot to do being that it was confetti. All my pens, I was journaling this morning, doing my journaling, writing down some things to talk to you guys about, because then I'm like, oh, I forgot, I forgot, to, oh my gosh, I forgot about that, <laughs> and um, um, I went, I, not just, uh, not that those four 10 centimeter tiles or four inch tiles were a lot of work, but they were a lot of confetti. And I am trying to, you know, you guys know that are my regular subscribers know that I am always trying to come up with tips and tricks to make Dinah painting an even more enjoyable experience than it already is. And, you know, ways to, even if there's psychological tricks <laughs> to making something seem easier, even though it's the same thing. I mean, you can't change confetti. How are you gonna change confetti? You can only change the way you think about it. So. This is, I had to go hunting for this because I took off the side ledger to Crimson and I really was like, I wish I had my little color uh, chart of drills that I do on the side because not only was I out of one drill completely, most of the drills were mixed together. I must have really been rushing, I must have really been tired and I had at least two colors in this container and two colors in this container and two colors in this container and two colors in this container. I was like, what were you doing? <laughs> what was going on <laughs> last holiday? Um, and, you know, I, I, I I'd sorted one container out. You know, I did a little meditation where I take the drills out and I place them on a flat surface and I take my uh, um, aligner, which I love. I have so many tips for an aligner and I was just sorting them out. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Oh, okay, I can get that section done. But I was still running out of drills. I still had three additional containers that ran out of drills. I'm like, I've never had this happen with Dreamer Design. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if I misplaced them. I took my art room apart. I went looking for these drills. I could not find them. I am going to have to get on uh, uh, the internet, uh, the website with Dreamer Designs, and I'm gonna have to order these drills, see if I can order them directly from them, or maybe they'll be kind enough to send them to me, or I'm gonna have to just reorder them. And I'm gonna have to do it because it's July. I'm in July because I'm planning a party for my mom's birthday. Mm. More of that Earl Grey tea with lemon and uh, agave that I had for Self Care Sunday which is a whole other story you guys loved. Uh, and uh, the listening path, which was the topic, was so well received for Self Care Sunday. And I'm so happy because I am reading the section that I'm going to do with you guys this Sunday. 
but I'm rereading it every day. Not just reading it and saying, okay, well, I'm gonna do this on uh, Self Care Sunday. Really rereading it every day and it's been so helpful to me bringing this book out more so than any book that I've ever brought out uh, from my past uh, library reading that I really I, I have books in my library that I really truly just reflect upon and that they're like well I need to um, I need some spiritual guidance I need to feel good about uh, what I'm doing I need to have some validation and so I'll come up with um, I want to keep these books here because I have things to show you guys um, you know I just they're the books that are in my library that I choose to share with you guys and I really wanted to do a video just on the books that are in my library that I could you know share with you and that I found that that really just changed my life so many good books Anyway, so self-care Sunday was so well received. I was so happy about that. Just really happy that you guys like the listening path. And I've been so hyper aware when I am writing now about what I am listening to when I um, write and things to be grateful for. Like my husband, he's a musician and he's half deaf. <laughs> he went to the Stones concert. He went, um, he's like, do you want to go? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> I did it once. The Rolling Stones was my first concert. My girlfriend, Lorraine Seary, her father worked at the Spectrum. And he told us, I, I, Lorraine was a little bit older than me. She may have been 14, but I was 10 maybe. Well, listen, I was, I was all juiced up on Sweet Honesty and Donny Osmond back in those days, so. I knew one stone song and I thought I was cool. <laughs> and so we were going. Now, my parents wouldn't let me see Love Story a few years later. So I, they didn't know about this whole Rolling Stone thing. I'm going to sleep at Lorraine's house. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Because Lorraine, Lorraine's family had a bunch of kids. So, you know, they, they knew where I was. They knew what I was doing. They, I was right around the corner. I was a good kid. They really didn't check on me. So, you know, thankfully I got away with it, but I really didn't get away with anything because we were horrified. Not her father had the best intentions and said, you girls are going to rock, rock, this is rock and roll history. This is, this is the greatest band on earth. And he was a security officer. And so here's the stage. Let's just say this is the stage, right? We're here. We're right here. <laughs> we're this close to the washi tape. We're dead center. The only people in front of us are the press. And the Stones were three and a half hours late. Okay. So it's like close to midnight. We're high from, you know, everybody smoking uh, weed and whatever. But the girl next to me was like so happy that we sat next to this really nice kind of cool kids. Um, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. And, you know, we were just, we were just thankful. They were like maybe in high school. And we we were just like they're like really clean cut kids and and they're they're not smoking any of this funny shit and we felt safe with them until the stones came on. Then you know what happened? She took her top off, threw it on the stage, he got on his shoulders, and he was smoking a bong. Okay, <laughs> this was my childhood. <laughs> this was my childhood in South Philadelphia, and I was praying to Donny Osmond. Let me tell you, praying. We were crying that finally her father was like, what came over? He's like, what's wrong? We were like, we want to go home. We had it. We had enough. We had enough. And I'm not even telling you half of it. I'm not even telling you half of what went on at that concert. And the things that Mick did on stage. We were just like, oh. <laughs> talk about bludgeon pearls. <laughs> but I had the best time at Lorraine. She was my best friend. She just celebrated her birthday, June 5th. And like, I don't talk to Lorraine like all year long, but I see her out sometimes. Like she'll come when my husband's performing. I'll see her out at like Vendemia or um, Columbus Day Parade or something. And and um, I'm telling you, every time I see that girl, I want to break into the locomotion. 
<laughs> Don't rock the boat. <laughs> so she, yeah, she just had a birthday June 5th. What else is going on? I don't even know how I got on this tangent. Oh, he went to the Stones concert and I got the t-shirt. So that was cool. It was nice and quiet in the house. Got a lot of things done because I've been behind. Not behind. My, I don't like to say things like that out loud. Like, I'm, oh, I'm so behind. Um, my schedule just changed because, you know, I had to take care of my mom, you know, with this accident that she had. And I had to, um, you know, just rearrange my schedule some. It was okay. You know, she's doing better. Um, now that she's gotten some cosmetic uh, work done on her mouth and she feels more confident that like she's not walking around with a missing tooth she's happy so um she's able to you know confidently go outside and not feel like oh i, I'm, I look like you know <laughs> don't look at me <laughs> i'm horrible looking as if she could ever be but um yeah so that's been going on we're starting to get settled but now we're her birthday is coming up July 19th and she always hears my husband saying that he's going to go practice with his friends and and that or they're, they're coming over here to practice in his room in his studio upstairs and she'll be like oh you know um you know oh you know can we come over and listen to you practice and my husband's like no <laughs> you know um and hang with a bunch of guys in the room and she's like well you know what i want i want you to come to my house and i want you to um i want you to set up and practice here now i don't think that she really realized what the hell it was that she was asking because there's equipment and everything involved that goes along with this and he said well i'll tell you what he said you know um you have a birthday coming up and i will do that i will come here i will set up i will have my friends come over we'll have a party for you here because my mom has a big back and um, we're gonna have we're, we're, we're having a party. I'm cooking, and um, he's getting the guys together to jam at my mother's house. So we have that coming up. What else is going on? I'm just happy to be back at my desk. I am just like I'm having the. I it, it did even though I couldn't be here and um, diamond painting. It did force me to do other things like get back into my. Um, my studio that we're getting together i just went and picked out a ceiling fan yesterday so i don't die in there because it is hot in there and um what was i saying yeah I, i've been having fun in my art room i've been having rediscovering all these things that i bought oh yeah i like that oh yeah i gotta have that and like i don't want to be a collector of art supplies i want to actually put them to use so um I was in my art room. I'm like, you know what? I can't get to my desk. I mean, I could, really could if I wanted to. But, you know, I I just felt like if I'm diamond painting, I have to have the video camera on because it's like, oh, I need a video for Self Care Sunday. I need a video for, you know, Whip Wednesday. I need a video for Summer with the Masters, you know. And um, I, I just didn't have it in me to do that. And then, you know, just even dealing with my own trauma from her accident, my own past trauma, you know, um, it was, I, I knew it was going to catch up to me and it did, but you know, being a student of the artist way, and that's what the listening path is. It's, it's, it's a condensed version of the artist way. The artist way is a 12 week program by Julia Cameron, but the listening path also by Julia Cameron is a six week condensed program. All the highlights of the artist way. And, you know, um, I, I, I rely heavy on my stream of consciousness writing because that allows me to dump what is consciously on my mind and to make the unconscious conscious. And I've had a lot of breakthroughs in my life uh, that way, uh, in my life and dealing with things and problems and whatever. And, you know, I was just sitting in my art room and I'm playing with all these things that I have and different pens. I'm a pen freak, you know, I just, I love pens. And I had a bunch of glass pens and inks that I bought. I'm like, I can't believe I never used this stuff. 
I bought it, maybe maybe play with it for five minutes, but now it's out. Um, I have my desk coming from my old house, so it's gonna get set up there. You know, where it's there where I can use it. You know, I do like things in order and I tend to put things away, but I want them to keep coming back out and not getting lost inside of a, a drawer where they just never see the light of day again. And I have in here, I had to take this out yesterday. I have in here Quake Hold, Quake Putty. And I have to tell you, Quake Putty is very soft and pillowy. And it doesn't really get, I, I guess it doesn't get affected by the heat as much as the putty that we use, maybe because it has essential oils in it. And this is like really soft like a pillow. It goes in really nice. I have, I have wax on this and I don't know why, but, and um, you know, I'm enjoying using it. So it was something else that I've been meaning to try. Like, I think I tried blue tack and I really wasn't a fan of that. But I do like the, I do like the um, clay putty. I like it a lot. And I have putty coming. That's supposed to be a high humidity putty, which would be great. You know, put it to the test this week. <laughs> No better time than the present to put that, that to work. Um, what else do I have going on? Is Has anyone seen the new Diamond Art Club kits? I've Katie comes on in the background when I'm doing stuff, and she's basically background noise for the most part. Like, I have diamond painters that I'm, you know, listening to while I'm diamond painting. But... Um, I did see her want to use the new pen that I believe she said will come with each kit. And so it's a pen that's already filled with putty. And you can put a multiplacer on the other end, and but the you kind of twist it and the putty comes out and you can either cut it off or just like pinch it off with your finger. And it was making that tack, 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 tack noise. And you know, she was getting into it, but I'm like, Katie has an extensive um, pen collection. Um, that's her. That's her hobby. You know, she does use them though. But she's got an extensive pen co collection. I can't see her. You know, uh, foregoing her pen collection or her tray um, for uh, a Diamond Art Club toolkit. But that being said, she did like them both a lot, and. That being said, the whole reason that I started to do master classes was because when Diamond Dots came out with a master class, I just felt like they missed the mark on calling it that. If you're going to call it that, then you should have a master class. And I was really kind of surprised that there wasn't even a pull sheet on on the on the master canvas that they they chose to. Uh, render like okay so you have the girl with the pearl, pearl earring I, th there was no information on the artist there was no information on the technique you know just you know just like maybe a short bio of like you know why we picked this canvas and and you know let let me introduce you to the artist and then if the uh painter the diamond painter felt like well i really want to learn more about this painter and this technique because they did go through a lot of um, developing to even get those micro dots to make the flesh look even more realistic. So there was a lot of work that went into them, but I think in so many areas, they just missed the mark. They missed the mark on the toolkit for a master class. There was a few other things. I think there were things that just weren't in there that would have been nice. And I think putty would have been nice to put in there. Um, a bigger tray, better tools. You know, you're calling it a master class. And not that the masters had, or, or any master really has um, these upgraded tools. Some of them do, but most of them don't. You'd be surprised that the masters paint it with. But, and I think maybe, you know, um, Diamond Art Club took the lead there and said, you know, we're gonna do a revamping. And, and I don't know how, I don't know how they went about um, listening to their diamond painters I, I don't remember getting anything saying you know if you wanted to change anything what would you change what would you keep because i think 
some people that are using them already, they're upset about some things that are missing that are not part of it. I think it's like a cover minder, which I don't really mind not having a cover minder. Um, I don't even really even collect them. And I can make a, you can go to the dollar store and get a, get a thing of magnets, which I did. And I bought a bunch of Klimt um, magnets, refrigerator magnets. And then I bought round magnets from the dollar store. And I said, oh, I can use these as, you know, a cover minder. But I don't, do you see them out here? <laughs> They're not here. And I have so many like bottle cap um, art you know where you you create art instead of a, inside of a uh, bottle cap that I had turned into magnets you know you do it with like collage papers or clip art I could use one of my bottle caps so I, it really wasn't it, it's it's, a, it's not a deal breaker for me if I don't have a, a cover minder <laughs> inside my kit so I think maybe they got rid of the cover minder but if you you if you have seen this kit and I think it's great, you know, not just for seasoned diamond painters to have something new and fresh, but to have something a little bit more easier, because I, I still use these pencil um, styluses. I love them. I have my I have my squishy on there. I have my Diamond Art Club uh, multi-placer that I finally became friends with. And I, you know, don't, don't give up on your art supplies, you know. The, you, you might want to go back and try them again and have a whole different experience. Sometimes it's not the supply, sometimes it's us. You know, sometimes we're just having a bad day or things aren't working out right, or maybe we're not at a level of patience that we should be to try something new. Um, and so just put it away, come back to it. And that's what I've been doing in my art room. I've been looking through things that I put away and I'm coming back to them and I'm just like so enjoying you know, going in my art room, I feel like I'm shopping. I'm like, I have so much stuff. I have so much stuff and I want to use it all. Especially my pens. I have so much, uh, I know if, if you're, if you're not new to me, you don't, you don't know, but I talk a lot about Jane Davenport. I love Jane Davenport and I have so many Davenport, uh, pens. I found a pen that she doesn't even make anymore. And it was a beautiful sketch pen uh, with fountain ink. And it's long and black and slim. And the weight of it is just perfect in your hand. And it has a brass tip and it just makes that scratchy noise into the paper. It makes beautiful strokes for um, sketching. And um, I found that. I was like, oh my gosh, <gasps> my Jane Davenport sketch pen. And I even found the ink too. <laughs> I found the ink. I found my, um, I was telling you guys last time, I found my wax and wax seals. Uh, I bought more, I have some more coming. What else did I buy this week? I bought a bunch of stuff. I mean, like I don't have enough art supplies, I bought even more. Um, I don't know what else I bought this week, but I know I was, I know I was shopping because like I, I had to do something. I had to do something. <laughs> so let me know your experience if you're doing the Diamond Art Club. I haven't ordered anything from Diamond Art Club. I'm still waiting for the custom order from Dreamer Designs because if I like it, I have another one lined up already that that's going to be like, okay, I love it. I love what they did here. Um, I love the, you know, the drills and I'm just going, you know, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to. Uh, get another one made. I already have one already uh, by an artist I, I don't know. I don't know anything about. But, you know, I'm on this bandwagon now of having a art room full of the masters in diamond, diamond paintings. So, that's going on. What else is going on? What did I write down in my book? I'll show you one thing that I, that I took out of my art room that I've been having fun and oh my gosh, so so you guys, I took the listening path out on the week of Father's uh, Day to read to you guys, but I had bought that for my husband because we were doing it together, and he, I wrote an inscription inside, but I didn't I didn't look at it. I didn't look at it until Father's Day after I, I think maybe when I was reading to you guys, and the inside was an inscription to my husband on January 16th, the day of my father's birth. 
And so uh, we went out Father's Day to um, his father's uh, um, cemetery, my father's cemetery. And along the way, all I did was pick up feathers, 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 feathers. When we got to my father's um, burial site, there were feathers everywhere, all over his um, grave. And I was like, oh, a feather, oh, a feather. And then I looked, I was like, oh my God, there's a bunch of feathers. I'm like, oh my God, probably a bird was attacked here. And then when I turned, there was a whole like wing of feathers. And I, I looked at my father's tombstone and I was like, really dad? <laughs> I mean, I got this, <laughs> I got the message. <laughs> I know you hear me. You had to have a whole wing <laughs> on your grave. <laughs> But I found this in my art room and it says for Lisa on the occasion of her 50th anniversary of her birth with much love, respect and admiration from your man, John W. Pescator. Now he gave me this in on my birthday, August 26th of 2020. And I put the last entry in uh, November the 8th of 2022. But actually I'm thinking I'm going to change that because I found some stuff back here that was from our second anniversary that I want to add to this book of just stuff that I put in here. Um, events that we went to places that we went to, but when he wrote was when he was writing this out, those of you that know me, I, I always have a camera in my hand. I these are these are in fact meaningful I took a picture of him writing on the cover of the book and I'm going to place that right there <laughs> so I have the inscription and I have that but this is not just the an the anniversary of my 50th birthday my 59th birthday is in here and my 60th birthday is in here and I mean trips that we went to cards that he gave me and this was the invitation that he had made for my 60th birthday so this is this is my art journal I have a little sticker camera sticker thing that I put away and I really want to take it out because I made these little stickers here and I was practicing a lot of my sketch work in here and I was like wow look how good I was getting and I stopped <laughs> I'm like I have to take a picture of all the little girls that I sketched because they're really looking cool. I don't know where they are, but they're in here somewhere. But this was something that I've been having a lot of fun going through and looking at. And then you kind of look at, you know, the way that your artwork develops. And, and you know, like if you look at this face here, where'd she go? I just saw her because she looked like she had a stroke. <laughs> and we wrote notes to each other in here. Um, that I have. Oh, where did it go? It was like really, I was looking at, yeah, like she kind of looks like she had a stroke. But then I was looking at some of my artwork um, that I was like, wow, I was getting really defined with like, you know, facial features with like faces. Oh, whatever. It's in here somewhere. But I really, I love this book and I cherish it. And my husband wants to get a scribe, a Kindle scribe. Does anybody know what that is? It's a Kindle. But it's flat like a notebook. It kind of looks like this, like a notebook, just like a screen, very flat. And you can write on it. You can put your download your books in it. It is a Kindle. You can put make post-it notes. You can underline things. I think it has Wi-Fi and all that. And I'm like, John, I'm a pen and paper girl. I love my pens. I love my paper. I'm not going to walk around with this um, thing. And he's like, well, maybe we can keep it in the house for the both of us. And we can like... You know, do like we used to do. We used to write each other notes. We had like a communication book that we would keep on the kitchen table to write notes to each other back and forth. And I'm like, yeah, but I kind of like the book. I like having the book. I like holding the book, like I just showed you guys. I like, I like, I like the book. I'm a pen and paper girl. And he he just doesn't get it. He's like, oh, I want to get it for your for your birthday. I'm like, I don't want it. I want a hand drum. I want a hang drum. That's what I want. I'm going to start strumming music in my bedroom. Go into like really deep meditations. <laughs> He's like, I'll get you the hang drum, but I want to get you this too. I'm like, I'm not going to use it. I think he wants it for himself, but he can have it. You know, buy it if you want it. I don't want it. And he's like, you could sketch in there. I'm like, I sketch in my sketchbooks and I like, I like my colored pencils and I like, you know, I like what I like. I like my supplies. I'm not going to do so. Well, you could still do that. I'm like, no, I don't have time to do both. I have time to do. <laughs> I don't have time to sketch in one book and then go and sketch in another. 
but he's hell bent. He's got it on the list. Christiana Moore, we're going. Oh God. I'm like, just get my, just get the ceiling fan hung in my room, please, so that I can go in there. Because it's murder. Our upstairs is murder. We have a huge, if you know anything about row homes, I don't care where you are in New York, South Philly. Um, the exhaust fans, like my aunt had an exhaust fan outside of her bathroom, and it was in the ceiling, but it was outside the bathroom. This thing was as big as a uh, a propeller on, 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 on a helicopter. You gotta see this thing. And you, she would turn it on, like everything would move in the house. Everything would be sucked up into the air. <laughs> so we have one in our hallway, but it doesn't, it hasn't worked. You can hear it kick on. We got to get it fixed. It's a big thing. Like you just can't call an electrician to do it. You got to get a guy on the roof, and then he's got to take that motor out. And that motor's got to go to a company that fixes them. Oh, it's a big project. And um, my husband gets frustrated very easily. You know, I can't trust him to hang a nail on the wall, and he knows it. I have to do it myself. I have to do it myself, and like you know, he's making me crazy. <laughs> I'm like, let me just hire Angie. <laughs> Angie's list. <laughs> He's like, no, I'll do it. I'm like, no, please don't do it. So I have to, <laughs> before he retires, I got to get all this stuff done. And, and when he comes home, I'll just tell him I did it. But I can't even tell him that because then he'll give me more stuff to do. Oh, my God. Where's my, there we go. Where's my stuff? What else did I want to talk to you guys about? Oh. So let me see. I want to know how you're doing with your your whip, whatever it is that you're working on. If you're working on Summer with the Masters or something else. if you Are you participating with Summer with the Masters? Are you doing that? Um, how's it going? I, I, I watched Anthony's um, video because him and Katie are taking turns switching back and forth. But I didn't get to Katie's um, I don't even know what she, I think she said she's doing little things, like smaller little baby bites of me. And that's really cute. I like that. I like that. And not to be overwhelmed by, you know, a big canvas. Because she, she was saying, oh, I have a canvas from Diamond Art Club and it's from Times of the Day. <laughs> but I don't feel like taking it out. It's too big. I'm like, is it this one? She didn't say which one it is. That would be funny. Um, but I know that she likes her custom, um... She likes her custom paintings, and I know that she likes John Waterhouse a lot. So I think she said that she was waiting for uh, a John Waterhouse from Jaded Gem Shop, maybe. And that's somebody else who I want to try. I want to try a canvas from Jaded Gem Shop. And something else, uh, Distracted by Diamonds. And I think I want to do Distracted by Diamonds. I think that's the one. Because their company is based in the United States. They might be the only diamond painting company that's based in the United States. I'm not sure. But I know most of them are, you know, manufactured out in China. But someone asked, is there is there a U.S.-based diamond painting company? And the answer was yes, Distracted by Diamonds. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I will check them out. Um, so let me know how you're doing with your canvas. And your whip. What are you working on? I have, I have another one in the background that I want to... There's one I want from Jaded Gem Shop. Um, and then there's another one that I want to have made if the one from uh, Journal Designs comes back and I love it, which I think I will. I, I've never had a problem with um, any canvas that I've gotten from Journal Designs. Never had a problem. People say, oh, yeah, they're a Diamond Art Club wannabe. No, they're not. They're doing their own thing. And if they are, um, you know, getting inspiration from another company... Hey, why not? They're looking to be good. They're looking to be good. So I don't. That's why I don't compare. I don't. I don't compare. Uh, everybody has their own vision for what they want for their company, and you know, if they are paying a little homage to Diamond Art Club, so be it. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with striving to be uh, good at what you're doing. Or learning from someone that's you know getting it done, holding it down in the diamond art in the uh, diamond painting category. 
And if you're getting inspiration from them, like we're getting inspiration from masters, so be it. But I've liked everything from um, Dream of Design. And I know when I was doing Lilac that the, um, the maybe it was that the diamonds were smaller than the ABs or the ABs were bigger. I don't think it was the ABs because the ABs were, were a little tough to get in because they seem to be bigger than the square. No, were they squares? Yeah, well, they, they're all squares. If you've got a square diamond painting, then you have a square AB. But they seem to rise up off of the shawl that Lilac was wearing, which gave the painting some texture and it looked like uh, fur, like, like like she had a fur shawl on. And, and I love that texture and that little bit of definition in the painting. And if they were going for that, bravo, because I think they did a nice job. And if it was just something that they land, landed in on and it worked, I love mistakes like that. <laughs> I love when mistake. that's why I always say there are no mistakes. All, all the pieces that I've ever done in my life that I was like, oh my God, I made such a mistake there, turned out to be the ones that I love the best. I think that this putty is cleaner too as I'm working with it. You don't really have to press hard to pick them up. What else did I write down for you guys? I think I wrote down um, Presumed Innocent by Scott Tarot, not James Grishin or James Patterson, whatever I was telling you guys, by Scott Tarot. We, John and I watched the third episode last night, and I have to tell you, we're so hooked on this show. We both have different perspectives of what we think is going on. Mm. and we're both like we're loving this show so much we both want to read the book so so I said well you know you get that Kindle scribe you can put your book in there he's, nobody tells me the person that, don't, that doesn't understand that his wife needs, a, needs like a physical book an art journal a copy book to write in color pencils paint brushes doesn't understand that he tells me, oh, I won't use the Kindle. I like, I like having a book. I'm done. <laughs> I was like, you're killing me, John. You're killing me. So I was like, if you had the, the, um, the Kindle, because you could put the Kindle on your phone, too. And you could pick up where you left off when, you know, you're out on the job. And, like, you know, you, you know he has his lunch in his truck. And he loves to read. That's what he does when he's on, out on lunch. He's sitting in his truck and he's reading. Like he don't want to read. He don't want to read on a Kindle. <laughs> he won't put notes in the book because he doesn't want to. He loves his books, so he won't put notes in there. So now you could put little notes in your Kindle, but no, he don't want that. I'm telling you. <laughs> I've known him my whole life. I didn't fill any of these pens. Oh, I didn't fill them. I know why. I was waiting to see if my new putty was coming today. But I don't really think anybody's delivering anything that they don't have to uh, in this heat. And honestly, I don't know why my husband just can't get our mail. <laughs> why can't you just pick up our mail and take it off? The, you know, you're you know, you're at the post office. Our mail is at the same office that you're at. Pick up our mail. <laughs> I said, I'll allow you to do that. I will discuss this with him when he comes home tonight. How come you just can't get our mail? Why do we have to wait? We'll have to wait for Lester to come and bring it. <laughs> Retirement's going to be fun. So I did take a big block here. This might be, well, this is bigger than, than uh, a 10 centimeter because this this border is just a repeating of the same colors. So I kind of pulled some off too, didn't I? So you go here. And you go here. 
and you got caught underneath, so I'm gonna have to replace you. And then I have a piece of, oh, did I tell you guys? Yesterday, I had my husband home with me because it was Juneteenth, so it's a federal holiday. So I got him home with me, and he's trying to fix the light switch on this. I told you he can't hang anything, right? He's trying to fix the light switch on this lamp. I gotta show it to you, because you guys know it, right? This lamp. Yeah. The light switch. Now I love this lamp because it's like it reminds me of something from Mad Men. It reminds me of, um, uh, oh my God, right? Uh, the 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 architect, right? Um, not Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, Russell Wright. Um, he did a lot of pottery, and you know his his wife Mary was also she designed stuff ergonomically for the home and furniture and stuff. So. Not only did the, the switch break, <laughs> but he lost the piece that when you put the, the lampshade on and you screw the little uh, thing on top, you know that thing, and he can't get it to seat right on the lamp. And so I come over and I turn the lampshade upside down. I'm like, how's it working now? <laughs> so he's like, oh, I like it. You're thinking outside of the box. Oh my God. So I was doing something. I came back at my desk to sit down and just be like, oh, I was saying like a silent prayer that he would just hurry up so that I could get to my diamond painting. And I don't know what I was doing. I think I was cleaning out all these things, right? Waiting for my new potty. What did I do? I stabbed myself. There was blood everywhere. He went, oh my God, what did you do? I'm like, I got stabbed with these tweezers again. I, I, was, I was so close. To taking a picture then i was like no i'm not gonna put this on the internet of like you know it was, it's a little puncture wound but just i had blood on both hands both hands i should have milked it i should have milked it i'm like i'm always getting stabbed with these tweezers all i'm doing is taking putty out i really have to get rid of them i have to get rid of them they're dangerous they're really dangerous i don't know why i put this on here I was afraid. Oh, yeah, see, it's coming through his head. You can't, you can't. They're, 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 they're. I, I, I put this down here. I don't know why. Maybe because, I don't know. Maybe because it was in my desk drawer and I just wanted to, like, you know, do something with it. I don't know. Am I even in the shot over here? No, I'm not even in the shot. I gotta turn this around. So I just went to put it this way. It'll come right through the head. I'll get, I'll get stabbed again. I can't do it. All right, let me get this right. Go back in there. I'm petrified. Of you, did you see my hand shaking when I put them away? My hand was like this, shaking, putting them, putting them away. I'm scared to death of them. <laughs> I'm scared to death. Oh my god. Now I got a glare from this light. Maybe if I lower this light a little bit. My husband did rig this up for me because I just felt like, um, is that going to be weird? Maybe just for a second. Am I in the shot? I do this all the time. Am I in the shot? Am I in the shot? What are you guys looking at? Am I in the shot? <laughs> so if your if your TV just got funky, it was me. I changed the light to get rid of the glare so I could see where I'm going. I still don't know where I'm going. Yeah, so we're, we're so into Presumed Innocent. It's an Apple TV show with Jake Glennon Hall and it was interesting. We, we both got up at two o'clock this morning and we were talking about the show because it was the last thing we watched before we went to bed. And my husband has his theory and I have mine. And you would think that we were in, you, you would think that we were on trial in, in, in a court the way that we were going at it this morning at 2 a.m. <laughs> I'm really loving this. I, I, I had said, you know, um, that a longer placer really doesn't give you, I feel like the spacing doesn't match up to the symbols on the chart, but I'm having no problem with this. So, you know, I think you do just have to come back to things and take a look and try it again. And maybe it's this putty, I don't know. I do find this putty cleaner and I'm very happy about that because you don't want to have like extra things to do when you're done diamond painting like 
cleaning wax off of drills or putty that gets stuck. Um, and it's just been so so much easier. And I, and I think too, I know everybody loves the pop, and I do too. And when my new um, putty gets here, it'll probably be popping all over the place. But there's something to be said about quiet. <laughs> Maybe because I'm I'm reading the listening path again, and um, I was very grateful when I was explaining to my husband about sound that you know, and what what we filter out, what we're capable of filtering out. But when we really listen, how much noise there is, and how much we can actually control. And one thing I said to him is like, you need to control the alarm clock. I mean. I love your music, but not at 5 a.m. coming blaring out of the alarm radio. Like, um, it's just too early <laughs> for all that. Um, it's too early for Mick Jagger. <laughs> it's too early for Peter Gabriel. It's too early for everybody. And, and, and not at the decibel that you have it coming on. So I was very grateful that he said, you know, it is really loud. And maybe it was bothering him too, but... You know, it wasn't until I said something that he said, you know what, it's it's too loud, you know. Let, 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 let's, let's wake up a little bit more peacefully. I was like, wow, that was easy. I really thought he was going to give me a fight. I got to get up. I came here. You know. I love this painting when I hang it up on my door because it is so long and foofy anymore I don't know what's going on with this cat um, you know he's with me all day so it's not that he's missing me but he he can be you know he wants to get up on my desk and he's being really defiant he wasn't like that and I know that he's feeling more comfortable with me and John now because he's here almost a year but not so comfortable that he just stops listening which is what he's doing. He, when he wants to ignore you, he'll ignore you. He'll act like he just doesn't hear you. So I think, you know, for even like as much as I had going on, that I still made pretty good progress with this um, canvas because I'm, this is like more than the halfway mark right now. So I'm um, happy that I'm able to, you know, dip it over the side of my desk and give you guys another perspective of me, you know, doing it. I really wanted to turn it the other way so that you can see, but I feel like I never know where to put my hand at, you know, and being that I've been up since two o'clock in the morning, I don't, <laughs> I didn't have it in me to look at this chart sideways. <laughs> and even yesterday, I, I put these in, um, these little trays that I bought from the Diamond Painting Group, DPG, and I was still taking them out of the tray and putting them in here. I'm like, what am I doing? These are like repeating um, colors. Here I come again with this one. And I'm taking them out of the tray and I'm, I'm you know, this was supposed to make my life easier and I'm not even playing along the right way. <laughs> tired I'm tired but you know I, I'm, I've never been the type to nap is anybody else like that I, I have friends that could take a power nap and be great um, but I just can't rest during the day I just can't I, I just am like I'd rather just get it done and go to bed early but then I get that second wind and you know here we are first day of summer not only is it the first day of summer but it is also john's 26th anniversary with the united states postal service happy anniversary darling i love you and in five months you're going to be mine all mine i try and make sure each drill has a buddy so that they're lined up evenly. Here we go. I 
don't know if you are misaligned. I have come up with some new tips and tricks that I think would be very helpful. So I'm going to have to do that video soon. But I want to test out my theory with confetti and give you guys, you know, some little psychological games <laughs> when you're like, oh my gosh, because confetti really is beautiful. Um, but it could be, you can tire easily, your eyes tire easily. Um, you don't have that sense of, um, You know, like I'm getting somewhere, you know, accomplishment, sense of accomplishment. Um, I mean, you do. When it's time, <laughs> but, you know, to just like take out your, did he shoot all the way over here? To take out your uh, canvas and work for an hour and then just see that. Well, I got so much more to do, but I did do more. It's changing the language. It's just changing how you're looking at it to make you feel uh, good about what you're I'll, doing. I'll tell you, the black drills, I, I hear people say all the time, black drills are the trashiest, but these really were uh, trashy. Like, I, I just felt like, I know they're black, but not just black, but dirty. I would have loved to have seen this outline the way that the Mooka moon was done and they were done in a black AB and it was absolutely stunning. I, I think it I think it really just deepened the detail of that painting. Um, but maybe because they had more like royal colors in that canvas, it was a lot of deeper greens and bluish greens and blues and the black oh my god it was just so stunning really the pastel colors were just in her face and around her head where the moon was creating this glow this aura around her that painting is stunning and that one is hanging up in my room but i have an idea for this canvas too so got a lot of things going on i mean i do sit down like you know you know, sometimes with, you know, just my diamond painting and other times just to brainstorm ideas to make diamond painting ideas fresher and, you know, not fresher, but, you know, new. You know, I'm always thinking outside the box, like my husband says. You're thinking outside the box. Now, I don't think I have. I didn't finish this line. What's I doing? I didn't finish this line. I was busy yapping. That's what I was doing. I have to check my book too. Make sure I talk to you guys about everything that I wanted to talk to you about before it's time to go. Oh my God, it's 53 minutes already. I have been diamond painting for 53 minutes and talking. <laughs> This might be one of those videos. I've never done it, but I'm dying to just get done with a video and just hit send. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't do any editing, just hit send. It's good, it's good, it's good. Foofy's not here. He, he, he's in my foyer on his perch. Like he's got his own little private apartment and he looks outside the window at everybody walking by so there's no antics from Foofy he was he he was up to his antics yesterday he was kept coming over to my desk and leaning he wanted he wanted to play with the drill trays all of a sudden I was like get out of here what are you crazy and that's why I'm afraid with these trays that I just bought I want to get these all buddied up but I want to stop doing that too and I'll tell you why in my next tips Oh, worried about Foofy. I almost knocked it over. All right, so that color's done. Okay. This this color reminds me of Glow in the Dark. Let me check and see if I had anything else that I wanted to talk to you guys about. 
uh, what we talked about Father's Day and Presumed Innocent. Oh, you know, not just watching Presumed Innocent and me and my husband wanting to buy the book now and read it. Um, but have you ever read a book and then they turn it into a movie because it's a hit book? And you're like, oh my God, what did they do to this book? They totally ruined it. What did they do to it? Did you, like, like I want to get this book now and read it, but now I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm like, the only book that I could say, well, Message in the Bottle, I think I told you guys, was nothing that, that Nicholas Sparks wrote. Nothing. Not, other than there was a message in a bottle. That was it. I don't even, I even know how that all turned out. Um... But I was doing a lot of Audible, and I got Gone Girl on Audible. And let me tell you, the girl that read her part, and the guy that read, they had two readers, and they both had to be from Broadway. They had to be Broadway actors. They made that book so enchanting, and so, like, I couldn't wait to come home to, like, get into the bath. And, and just turn on another episode. I'm calling it an episode, but another chapter of Gone Girl. That's how good it was. And there was a lot that was taken out of Gone Girl, uh, the movie. But if you didn't read the book, you didn't miss it. I, I do think that they should have added some things in that were in the book. But it wasn't that big of a deal. Not like Nicholas Sparks. Holy cow. They, they absolutely murdered that book. Um, I absolutely, I, I was so upset that, um, when, when Hollywood got their hands on it, because it was such a beautiful book. I think I read that book in like a day and I, I don't have many books that I do that with. Let me get this piece of paper here. Don't ever, and I just did it. I put my, my cellophane down the wrong way but because this has no washi tape on it. I don't know which way is the right way or the wrong way, but I'm doing the drills that are done. Just to make sure that they're all on the same line because this is a border and you want those drills to be neatly in line. So what book did you ever read that um, maybe got turned into a movie that you were kind of like, oh, forget it. <laughs> And what else? Are we, Diamond Art Club, The Listening plan, Path. Um, how your campuses are coming along. I, I can't believe I hit I hit all my marks. <laughs> I hit all my marks. I got them all done. So I'm going to let you look at me <laughs> while I just turn this around so that you can get a glimpse of Night's Rest. She is so beautiful. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to hang her back up and you can see her that way. Let's do it that way. Here we go. She is hanging back up on my door. I just love that flower. You can see that they're ABs. And being that she's hanging in my doorway that leads to my living room, um, and there's like a slight breeze in here from the fan, you could, she moves every now and again and you can really see, let me get back here, you can really see um, her beauty. And when I am sitting like in my in my chair across the room, do you see that window? You see how lifelike that tree looks? Let me come back some. Um, when I am further back and I am looking at her and I'm sitting in my living room and I see that panel behind her, it's so lifelike. I just love it. I just love it. And so, yeah, you can see I'm like, you know, a good way past the halfway point. And then I'm going to, um, I'm coming down the left panel. And I, I am taking two 10 centimeter or two four inch panels. There's five going across if I had washi tape. I didn't want to washi tape the whole canvas because I wanted to give you guys updates and I felt like the washi tape was distracting. But there, there are two um, four inch or two centimeter tiles that I'm doing across. I did, yeah, straight down the left. 
and then I'm going to come across the bottom, do all five, and then I'm gonna come up two panels, is that my finger? <laughs> two panels on the right, and then I'll finish the top part, and then I'm going to come straight down the middle. And if you look at the middle, it is basically color blocking heaven. But that's where we are. So I'm glad I got to have this update time with you. I'll even let you see the prince's, uh, this is his, uh, his own little room here. There he is. Huh, look at him. Had us up all night. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. He decides, it, yeah, it's time to get up. I want to eat. Is he, did he open his eye? I can't tell. Did he? Did you open your eye, Foofy? Oh, no. Look at him. Passed out. Mort. <laughs> He's so cute, though. Oh, my husband's going to like this part of my video the best. I'm going to say, no part I love the best. The part with Foofy sleeping. Yeah, sure. Look at him. The king. He took over my antique sofa. He lays here now. He's as big as this sofa when he sprawls out. <laughs> He's a terror. <laughs> anyway, this has been fun. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to get some lunch. Maybe I'll even learn how to take a nap. I don't know. I don't know. See you guys soon. Create the world you want to live in. Tell me some good stuff. Bye. <laughs>